Hey, Change Agents, and welcome to another episode of Change Agents TV. It's Tracy and Ty again. <laughs> so today we're talking about the logic model framework. What is it and how does it, um, how does it work? So Ty, you want to start? Framework is the ultimate word. You just said it, right? It's the, no. yeah, the logic model is a blueprint for your programs. You know, it tells you what it is you're supposed to be doing, how you're going to be doing it, and, and why you are doing it, and, and what difference this program makes. You know, um, we talked yesterday, well, it'll be yesterday now, about what what a program is and, and what it isn't, and applying this framework to your activities that you're doing, because that's what most of you guys are doing, you know, activities, but being able to pull these things together to mm -hmm. make sense, to make a, a, a logical process towards something that, you know, something objective, some objective you're trying to reach, some outcome you're trying to achieve. That's what that is. It's a framework that gets you there. So we don't, we don't just do it over here. And no. you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> we're not Nike. We don't, yeah. just, we don't just do it. We have a, we have a plan for everything. Right. So, There's a system. So it's a three-part system. It's in um, inputs, um, inputs, outcomes, and um, what is it? Oh Lord, <laughs> input, output, and outcomes. My yeah. God. And I, and I even did, you know, in the model that the in the infographic, and in the mm -hmm. you know, you'll, you'll see the three steps right there. I like to build it a little bit. Further yes. because you want to that's go. Just and, the that's just a that's the framework, right? Framework. And, and but inside there's through. a lot of different components. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. lot of different components, and there's a lot of spaces in there where you are actually looking at measurement. You yes. know, and sometimes we get afraid of the measurements. You're like, oh, but you People got are just afraid of data. Data, yeah. just data. Period. It's like, okay, that's a number. You know, mm -hmm. other than the other than somebody giving me money, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about numbers, right? That's kind of how we how we kind of process things and that's you know what we should not be doing when we're talking about logic models and we're talking about frameworks you have to be able to do a step do it in steps and those steps should equal some type of measurable outcome, outcome. Mm -hmm. whether that's you know how many teachers do we need to promote to, to uh, implement this program mm -hmm. that's a measurement mm -hmm. right and those are some things that we we miss we just kind of like oh we need some teachers and then mm -hmm. i'll you know i'll ask some of my clients well how many teachers do you need for this we just need some teachers. You know I mean? right. We don't know. Well, and if you just need some teachers, if you don't even have the measurable outcomes for the teachers, like, oh, we need some, te we need this amount of teachers because we expect this amount of kids to be in the right. program, right. then how are the teachers? That means that your program probably has no um, evaluative processes for the mm -hmm. teachers to determine whether or not they're effective at what they're doing. And that framework that you're talking about, you know, that, that puts it together. So what exactly. are your objectives? For your teachers, uh -huh. what are your objectives for your students? Uh -huh. What are your objectives for your, the program in general? Uh -huh. What are your objectives for the audience outside of your teachers and students? These all these things that come into play when you're building this framework, so you could make this really pretty picture of what your program vision was. So you have all these right. little pieces, and then you you're gonna put it all together. And you're like, oh, okay, now I know. This is right. what we're aiming for. This is what we're trying to do. And this is why we're trying to do it. And this is what we did. So even when you're when you're going through these processes and these pieces of the of the framework and you're climbing up this ladder, you know, you're like, oh, okay. So you're and you're you're not it's like the Mario game, you know, they have a little yeah. <laughs> and you're you're jumping over these things and you're, you're you're getting these coins and points as you go along and you're eventually you're gonna save the princess. That's that's the that's the impact that you make, right? Eventually right. you're gonna get to the princess, but you have to go through these different worlds first. You got to mm -hmm. go through all these different levels before you get there. And these levels are those pieces that we put together in this in logic framework. Model framework. Right. And one of the thing that the one of the things that the framework allows you to do is to be proactive instead of reactive. Mm -hmm. so I'm always talking about proactivity versus reactivity because I hate being in a reactive state. When you're in a reactive state, you don't make good decisions. And so the program allows you, as you're building this program through, the framework allows you to analyze or to, to foreshadow things that can possibly happen mm -hmm. through the implementation stages mm -hmm. that you would need to deal with. So let's say that you are going to um, have a program for um, like a writing program. Let's say it's a creative writing program and you 
are expecting 20 kids to come into the program. You may have some criteria for these children coming into the program, but when you do get the children into the program, because everything does everything that looks good on the outside isn't necessarily good on the inside. So you may get some kids who come into the program and maybe they have A's in school, maybe they have B's. So you think they're good writers and they get into the program and their writing skills are less than what they should be. They're not up to standard. They're not up to grade level. In creating this program, that is something that you would think about through the um, the planning process. If you're sitting down with someone who really and truly understands programs and understands the structure of the program that you're trying to create, and you can already build something into the program mm -hmm. to deal with those students. Mm -hmm. So that's being proactive versus being reactive because there's nothing worse than when you try to run a program and you get these 20 kids in and you're all gung ho and you're ready to go. And then half of those kids can't tell subject from verb. And you're like, oh my goodness, well, what are we going to do now? We have to restructure this entire program on the fly to support these kids. But no, you have to think about these things before implementation mm -hmm. and this that's is all in the program planning stage the form of you know formative evaluation and we're going to do about we're going to yeah. deal a lot with evaluation i think we're dedicating mm -hmm. like a whole lot of times to evaluation <laughs> um, in this mastery because this is kind of they they work together mm -hmm. you know you, you wouldn't know that something is needed unless you evaluate that and you don't have to do a whole lot of troubleshooting and backpedaling right. and things when you do some types of evaluation up front, you have your process evaluation, you have your outcome evaluation, you get, mm -hmm. but you're, you're going to want to stop at certain points during your program implementation to even know whether or not what you're doing is working. It's a really, really horrible thing to be doing something for five years you know, and it not working. Yes. And you, you know, when the, when the new when the American the, school system came on, I, rem, I remember people were upset because they were saying, you know, they're going to cut funding to stuff and we're going to do this and that. And then, you know, I read the little, you know, the publication that they had about what they were going to be trying to cut. And a lot of those things that they were trying to cut was because those programs weren't meeting the objectives that the funder um, would have liked for them to reach and were definitely not reaching the objectives that they even said they were going to reach in their proposals. They're just doing right. it, right? They were mm -hmm. just doing we got an after school program. Okay. So we meet, we meet after school. When does, what to do after school? Mm -hmm. uh, we just meet after school. Mm -hmm. Okay. You tutor. And what's, and what's the, what's happening with that? We're just tutoring. You're just doing it. Right. Yeah. So when you got $20 million going into a program like that and nobody's graduated from high school still, you know, no, nobody can, people still ain't reading, you know, ACT scores are still fives. You know, and, and you're saying that this that your program is going to improve upon those things. Right. You're not doing it. So the next best thing for the funder to do is take his money away. That, and and that's that, another that, organization yeah. that can show effectiveness. That's going to do it. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of, we get like we get upset a lot of times because we're, we're not getting our funding. And, you know, they're discriminating against us. If you're, I'm talking about, you know, if you're minority groups or whatever, because we're not getting the funding. And a lot of times, a lot of those issues lie within the evaluation components. They lie yes. in whether or not the month. And sometimes we can talk a good game. If you've got a good grant writer, I promise you, if you've got a good grant writer, they can talk some stuff. I'm telling uh -huh. you, and it'll look good. It will look yeah. so good that if I got a million dollars, I want to give it to you. Right. <laughs> but when you get into the implementation of the thing and then you're not properly evaluating this and we don't know if this is working and it's report time mm -hmm. and your stuff don't look good <laughs> you know or you didn't turn it in because you don't even know what to do and you're not producing the kind of results that 20 million dollars should produce mm -hmm. we want our money back right we're not giving you no more don't even don't even apply because we're not going to give it to mm -hmm. you so one of the things that um, people used to ask is why do teachers go to school like a week or so before the kids actually come to school? Like it can't take that long for you to decorate your classroom. Most teachers are not really decorating their classroom. You get your class roster and then you get test scores. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing for that week. You're mm -hmm. sitting down and you're going through your students' test scores. 
What did they score on the grammar usage and mechanics section? I'm talking from an English teacher's perspective. What did, what did they score on the grammar usage and me, uh, mechanics section? What did they um, score on um, comprehension? You know, what did they score on um, vocabulary usage? That mm -hmm. is what we're looking at. We're looking at the data, mm -hmm. right? Because that data mm -hmm. is what we are going to use to drive our... Mm -hmm teaching our curriculum, the lesson plans that we create for the rest of the school year, mm -hmm. okay? And we have benchmarks built into it. So after about three weeks of teaching something, I need, or we, I need to have an evaluation. And that evaluation can come in the form of a test or a quiz, right? It can be verbal. It can be nonverbal. It can be some type of a writing exercise to see if now you came in, I taught subject verb agreement. Can you write sentences that have the subject verb agreements in them? Mm -hmm. Or are you still making the same fundamental mistakes that you made that caused your test score to be so low? Okay, so these are the benchmarks, the same thing. I'm just giving you an analogy to show you how it relates back to programs. It's the same general consensus. You go to the doctor, you're sick. The doctor gives you some medication. Okay, like for me, I suffer from severe migraine headaches. I go to the doctor and I get um, Botox shots, 30, 30, 33, 36 shots in my head, right, to um, circumvent getting severe migraine headaches. So the whole plan is I was having a headache every single day. Depending on the severity, it could be mild to extreme where I get temporary blindness. Now, if I get these Botox shots and they're supposed to last for three months, when I keep my log, the doctor wants to see that I have a reduction in the amount of um, headaches I get every month and the severity of the headaches I get every month. That is tantamount to a program. Mm -hmm. I am on a program right now mm -hmm. to try to manage my headaches. And you're producing the change. I love both your analogies. I love your school analogy. Mm -hmm. Because and when you think about you know where we are right now and everything is going online and all that stuff, this is what separates the program from the activity. Because mm -hmm. you know, in school, what do they do? As soon as school closed, oh, we gotta go online. Mm -hmm. And for some, it was a little bumpy transition, but for most, we already kind of know what we're teaching. We already know what's going on in fifth grade. We already know what websites they can go to to continue their education. Mm -hmm. They just built the Google Classroom and say, hey, kids, have at it. Mm -hmm. Because the transition was easier. Mm -hmm. It was easier because they were the school, the classroom is already a program. It's right. already a program. Mm -hmm. So if a disaster strikes, you know what? We got internet. Let's go here. Right. You know, mm -hmm. if something, ha if, you know, if Hurricane Katrina comes back and washes out all the thing, and that was like a big disaster, right? Mm -hmm. Medical records got lost and whatever. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you know, systems start to be in place. So we know if something like that happened now, let's do this. Let's get a plan B. And mm -hmm. in your, in your model, because you are doing evaluation and you were saying about like predictive outcome mm -hmm. predictive mm -hmm. you know you can be able to predict and determine whether or not this is going to work or maybe this might happen these are some things that you think about ahead of time because you can predict those things and you, you predict know, those things based on past behaviors on past behavior based yeah. on the research that you've done based mm -hmm. on if you're in the classroom and you're looking at test scores from this kid who's coming from second grade and he's coming over mm -hmm. you know because of his test scores that he's not doing well in reading that's a right. past behavior right mm -hmm. your goal might be to improve his reading level but just in case because you know that he's struggling right there you're gonna right. build in analysis things. you have right. to be able to do that yes you're gonna build in some other steps for me for him where you that exactly. you may not build in for everybody else he's gonna right. get an iep or something he's gonna get something to help him out because he Precisely. needs these things right yep. and that's how you build and that's how you think about this when you're going forward in your organizations you're serving a group of people, we kind of jump from start to outcome and we don't mm -hmm. think about the processes. And that's where we get lost and that's where we lose the funders because they're like, yeah. okay, this, this sounds all great and good, but how are you gonna uh, stop a thousand people from smoking when everybody got cigarettes and everybody like to smoke? You didn't say how, what you're gonna do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How are you gonna do this? What are you, how are you gonna take in account relapse? 
What about stress? Like right now, like right. I haven't had caffeinated coffee in so many months. I don't even know what to do with myself. But, you know, I talk, you know, can I go back to what you talked about just to kind of give another comparison so people really get it? You can't solve one problem with another problem. So Ty mm -hmm. talked about smoking. So we had all of these programs about trying to get people to stop smoking. And what did we do? We took the, the cigarette and we yeah, replaced babe. it with what? The <laughs> vape, right? So we took one problem and replaced it with another problem. That is not that. a program, y'all. That is not a program. You know, that's, a, that's just crazy. You know, really. You got folk in the hospital for, you know, because they've been affected by from vaping. Uh -huh. That's not a solution to the problem. No, you know, and the thing is, it, you, you got different pieces of funding coming in because people want to because the country wants to see you solve a problem. Uh -huh. They don't want to see you create a new problem because now no. you got to figure out how to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So this formative research that you have to do to, to figure out hey, what's the problem in our community? How is it being addressed now? What's working so good? What's not working so good? Uh -huh. What can we do? to make this a little bit better. You have to mm -hmm. think about all of that when you're even creating the framework so you can know what, what process to take, what road to take when you're addressing the problem. Yep, I completely agree. And I think that's basically, you know, the logic framework right there. You know, again, you have your what you're putting in to the system. Mm -hmm. You have what you're taking out of the system and what you expect what you're taking out to look like. Mm -hmm. So inputs, outputs, outcomes. Outcome. That is it. And you've got to know it. Out, think about your outcomes first. You can kind of work this in reverse. Oh, you have to work it in you reverse. To me. You think about that first. Yeah. Like what is first of all, what are my objectives? What do we need to happen? Mm -hmm. And what do, you know, what needs to come out of this as a result of my objectives? Right. Okay. And if just you like we work this. So we decided, what do we want at the end? What do we want our people to learn? And we started there and then we worked our way back to everything that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. We didn't start, okay, we're going to get on live and blah, blah, blah. We already mm -hmm. sat down and decided. Even though I like to talk, it's just like, we didn't just say, let's get online talking to each other all day. You know? I know, right? <laughs> but we will. We'll <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like that. You have to work from the back end. What are the outcomes? What do, you, what do you want to happen? What's the ultimate goal? So when you decided to start a business or you start, decided to start your nonprofit, let's say you start, decided to start a business, your outcome was to make money. Mm -hmm. Nobody starts a business and that's not their outcome. And then you right? have to make the money, right? So it's nice right. <laughs> the process so is money. Now <laughs> you have to figure out how you're going to make that particular amount of money. And you have to develop the systems, the processes, and the programs to get the desired outcome. Mm -hmm. That's it, 100. <laughs> Y'all get ready. Y'all sign up. I'm going to get this form up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, the program is called, and you can go here to sign up. Um, it's called Building Profitable programs, a logic model mastery, because this is building profitable programs is completely surrounded by understanding and mastering the logic model. I am telling you, it will change your entire life. Everything. Okay. You can put that on everything, right? It's just to be a commercial. This lady was selling hot sauce, right? And she's like, I put that on everything, right? You can put it. You can put that logic model on everything. I promise you. Yeah. It will change your it will change your life and the course of your organization. You will see a complete 360 change in how you get funded, when you get funded, who's funding you, mm -hmm. you know, your grants being awarded because you will have the systems and processes in place in order to win. I, I don't even know what else to tell you. It's that is right. it. Let's, let's yeah. right here. <laughs> and granted, you know, you may be saying, oh, I can go on uh, online and I can research what the logic model is. Google got tons of stuff. I can Google it. We want to <laughs> Google our lives to death. But you can go out there and Google as much as you want to. But there's so much. You can find, you know, the framework everywhere. But that is a mean that you are going to be able to effectively build out that framework with mm -hmm. all of the subcomponents that you have to do hours. And I mean, and I'm not talking two, three hours. You have to do hundreds of hours 
to figure out how this entire framework works and how the subcategories of the framework works, how that relates to your funding, how you can generate the funding from it, mm -hmm. how you can implement it effectively, all mm -hmm. of the tools that you need for evaluation. I mean, it's it's an intense process. Mm -hmm. It's a layered process. This is like like three onions put together and you got to keep peeling back one layer after the next, after the next, after the next. And, and what you don't get from, you know, a lot of things that you do on your own, if you don't have the correct guidance, is how these things apply to your organization, Particular organization, your population, your in, the environment in which your organization is trying to mm -hmm. survive. That's the difference between me going out to, you know, looking at United Way and, and going to your organization. There's things that United Way has in place that you do not have. You do not. There's right. Pieces of the population that you are serving that they are not serving. Mm -hmm. There's a culture within your population that you have to address and you have to have a certain level of cultural competency to address your population that other organizations do not have. Or exactly. that you cannot find on Google because nobody mm -hmm. knows your population because they didn't do the research for your particular population. Right. So if you want right. to get into the mastery, because you got to learn all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You have to so know it's how not to just learning the logic model. It's all it's this is almost like a nonprofit mastery, a nonprofit funding and program mastery, because all of those components come together to create this logic model mastery. So mm -hmm. it's 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 comprehensive. It goes circular. It's 360. And then that bonus, that tie keeps itching. And that bonus. I'm not going to talk about bonus. Bonus is all like surprises, right? I'm going to I know, right? I'm going to keep this together. Y'all pray for me. All right. So thank you for joining us for another episode of Change Agents TV. Please go ahead and sign up. It is an investment in the success, the profitability, and the sustainability of your nonprofit organization. You will not have to keep saying, oh, because we're on the privilege, that's why our programs and services are not doing well. That's why my bank account looks like it needs to be taken to the ER, right? Life support. Life support. <laughs> right. <laughs> Life support. You know, that's you don't have to keep <laughs> taking money out of your pocket. Instead, money will be put into the account of the nonprofit organization. So you will be able to take a check from the nonprofit organization as an employee, understand that please understand that part you'll be able to take a check from the nonprofit organization as an employee of the nonprofit organization you'll be able to hire people that means you're enacting change you're changing someone's life in that way you'll be able to change lives through the programs and services that you provide so this is an investment in the success of your nonprofit organization getting you to the status of profitability and sustainability and ultimately compliance mm -hmm. Complaint. There we go. That is it. I have nothing, ma'am. You have done it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.